Yeah, we're just going to keep that a secret, Jim. Yeah, I'm all, all good. Right. All it's good. All, good. All, all right. good. Hey, we're on the air. It's Dave and Jim with the Home Server Show. Good to see you again. It's episode number 207. It is Wednesday, December 5th, and we're going a little early. This is 8 p.m. Eastern, so I'm sure everybody in the Central and uh, Mountain and uh, West time zones are, are still sleeping, still morning there, and we're, we're podcasting, but... Um, it's good to see everybody. Jim, how are you doing? Doing great, Dave. Yeah, it's a good Wednesday and made the trip home early to get things fired up for tonight's podcast. Yeah. And uh, don't touch the mic again. It, it just, Did it make a lot of noise? No. Oh, okay. It just it just cracks me up. <laughs> Jim's mic is broke, folks. Well, it's it's limp. It's, he's got a... Yeah. It's okay, Jim. It I'll mess with it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, everybody. I broke the. I broke the. Um, here's the. This is the tight thing that holds this piece tight, so you can. Uh, you know, and I. I always monkey with it when I'm during the podcast, and I'm always twisting it. And the other uh, last Thursday, I just snapped oh, really? it right right off in the middle of the show. Wow! It just came right off. And it went, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Again, episode two hundred seven. It's been two weeks, guys, since we've um since we've podcasted and I don't know Jim if I'm going to make that a point I mean if there's not a lot of new news then yeah yeah I think especially during the holidays teams. especially during the holidays we get yeah. you know we get a lot of stuff going on I know I've got some conflicts coming up for Wednesday so yeah, yeah so, might, maybe every other week up to CES, but we'll and then, talk. Yeah, we'll ramp it up maybe after CES cuz we'll, we'll have a lot of business to take care of. Yeah. And that reminds me, I need in the uh, doc, Jim, we've got the schedule, and uh, I'll let you uh, guys in the chat room help us out. We have um, the 12th, the 19th, the 22nd, 26th, I'm sorry, and the 2nd of January. So if you're looking at your calendar, uh, that's the nights, the Wednesday evenings for podcasting. Set aside for the home server show. So, Jim, any of those we need to, uh, I mean, the 26th? Do we need to be podcasting that day? Well, the, I think I'm, I actually have a conflict on the nineteenth. Let me take a quick peek here, but but uh, let me let me. I'll, I'll have to look at these dates and see what okay. see what comes up. You know what? Mind I wouldn't mind doing a post Christmas show. Uh, you know, talking about because everybody will want to. You know, everyone will want to talk about what they got, right? Yeah, share the goods. Jump into chat and and give us an idea of what uh, what came up. So. I heard John Stutzman was going to get another micro server, and his wife was going to beat him over the head with it. <laughs> now, why so on earth would he need another micro server? That's all <laughs> I'm saying. Why on earth? All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry we're taking care of some of that stuff live on the air, but uh, it is a home server show. Follow me at home server show on, on the Twitter thing. It's the best way to stay in touch and hear the times and announcements and things like that. Otherwise... Goodness, I don't that that is how I kind of communicate it. And yeah, your Twitter's been blowing up lately. I have noticed you're getting yeah, a lot of communication and, through Twitter. And um, you know, I'll I'll edit the the live page, but um, sometimes I don't edit that. You know, until one or two hours before the show. So that's the best way to to see what's going on. Jim Collison, he is at J Collison, and you can also find him at theaverageguy.tv. And Jim podcasts on Thursday evenings. If you if you want, you can hang around. I think we're going to do a Surface Geek show oh. right after this. I think I've got it announced at 10 p.m. That's for everybody in the live chat. If you're hanging out on uh, Google Plus or YouTube, you can come over to homeservershow.com forward slash live. We have a chat room, and everybody's in there, and you can chat and give us feedback back and forth. So welcome chat room. Let's keep it lively. I know I don't have to tell you any of that. Well, Jim, if we're just going to jump into it, this is the time of year where all the Christmas ornaments come out. Santa Claus comes down the chimney, but also we are busy, busy, busy little elves getting ready for CES. Now, one thing I'm going to just caveat the next couple of shows, that's what you're going to hear. And uh, I, you know, I can't do anything about that. This show kind of started revolving around the consumer electronics show in Las Vegas and we've kind of made it a part of our lifestyle it's a part of who we are it's 
generally how we meet up with some folks. That's our winter meetup. And uh, we like to go out and we find new things to report on, new vendors to uh, send us gear to review. And overall, we, we just kind of try to enjoy uh, Las Vegas. Now, Jim came out with me my second year. My second year? Yeah. Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. And we hit it hard. We had a good time. Except we were... It was, you know, we each wanted to do our own thing. You know, Jim wanted to go somewhere. I wanted to go somewhere. Yet we wanted to, like, report together. So it was kind of hard. Now, not that we don't enjoy that, but Jim has taken the role of kind of producer slash uh, director of the show. And I go out to Vegas. And he stays back at the uh, Average Guy Studios in Nebraska. Uh, sorry about those corn huskers, by the way. Yeah, it was a bad game. Yeah, and um, <laughs> he kind of, he's the guy in my ear, you know, and feeding me all the things to do, where to go, what time to be there, and um, all that kind of good stuff. So what we do is we're going to have live video the entire week of CES, and that's going to start on the 6th, which is going to be probably a Sunday evening. Uh, Jim will get into the studio, and he will not leave until Friday morning. I know Cheetos on my shirt <laughs> and <laughs> and um, so uh, Twitter is the best way to to figure out what we're doing. We're going to try to work something out where we're posting on the blog. Perhaps someone can be a champion of this and we'll create a thread in the forums, you know, like a CES schedule thread, and uh, someone can post in the latest things that we're doing. Um, it would be nice if someone could do that while we're at CES and try to get some of those guests that are in the forums over to the live feed. Now, the reason I'm talking out loud about this is because Jim and I, gosh, we were on the phone last night for about two hours. We, I didn't get to bed until 1 a.m. And we were going over, how do we get the word out? Because I, I feel and Jim feels that we provide a pretty good live show. And during that live show, Anything can happen. It, it's just such a good time, and we report on some good stuff, and it gets better and better every year because I'm able to, you know, stick my toe in in the door of you know more folks, and we want people to be able to to watch our live video. You know, we we don't make any money off of it. It's just we feel that we provide a pretty good product, and we want people to see it. So we are looking for. Anything and everything that maybe you know, um, if you have any ideas on how we can expose the show to more folks, uh, it would be great if you kept us in your browser 24-7 from the 6th to the 11th and uh, shared as much as possible. Share with your coworkers, share with uh, your Twitter friends. And Jim and I were talking, one thing that we thought we could do is we could kind of do it's not, not trolling, but maybe some like reverse trolling where you mentioned you know like the next spot we're going to let's say like last year I did uh, Buffalo uh, storage we did Synology you know you could tweet at Synology and tell them hey you know the home server sh show crew is coming coming to your booth and you know and then they in turn tweet it and you give the, the links to the live feeds and things like that so Jim, does that kind of sound what we were talking about? Yeah, I think so. I think the other thing I want to mention, uh, we, we talked about the kind of the video production, the way we're going to do it is I think at this point we'll be in a Google Hangout, but we're going to need to bring you in via Skype, and I'm going to have to do some trickery to get your Skype feed inside the Google Hangout, which might be the first time ever that Skype has been embedded inside the Google Hangout. So you'll have to watch to see if I can actually pull that off. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I could use, if we do that, I'm going to actually need a little help um, I might need a little help with some video production, which means I may need somebody to grab some, uh, you know, I will put some uh, video up for somebody to pull down and they would need to put it in Windows Movie Maker and maybe do some editing and maybe upload that to YouTube for us. Um, and, and we thought the, somebody in the Australian time zone uh, in, that, in that part of the world, that might work best because you guys, that's your afternoon when we're kind of wrapping up. And someone could spend a few minutes in the afternoon uh, kind of messing around with that. And then it would be great to have somebody in the U.K. that might be able to help us get it posted 
uh, once that video is produced. So we're, we're, we're looking to go worldwide on this, day. This is not just yeah. U.S. We're looking to go worldwide. So if you're in Australia, if you're in the U.K. or those time zones, um, you may be able to help us. Let us know, podcast at uh, homeservershow.com, and uh, let us know your interest if you want to do not super technical and not super difficult. We're really just looking for somebody to help us put that stuff together. Dave and I will be on the air most of the afternoon. I mean, most of the day. I've got to sleep a little bit in there at some point. So we're looking right. for some folks to maybe help us out along those lines. Yeah, and um, we're also, we could use, if anybody is uh, proficient in uh, WordPress, um, if you're not and you just want to help, um, there is an opportunity where I can make you an author and we can feed you <clears throat> information and you can put those blog posts out there for us. Um, you know, because I'm, I'm always hightailing it between, you know, halls and booths and you know from the venetian to the uh, convention center i i can't stop flip open the, the laptop and and do it now these other teams like you know in gadget or the verge you know they give their reporters you know here's the story you go get you get this and this and this and then write it and launch it and so they go get their story and then they come back to the van or the the press room they write it up and uh, and then they go on to the next one. Well, see, I don't have that luxury. I have to just keep rolling. So that's why we, we turn to the live feed. And so we're going to do live video. So we're going to try Skype. <clears throat> and if uh, our fallback is always going to be Google Hangouts. And because Jim can get me into a Google Hangout from my phone. And then we're going to, uh, we'll work on the live video at that point. We've got many options, many options. And Jim, I've got, a surprise for you. I've got an extra option. Um, the home server show is going to have a Lumia 920 to use during CES. So Nokia is going to furnish us a 920 and we're going to be able to use that. So I've got Verizon and that is obviously an AT&T phone. So uh, we'll have two networks. So we should oh. be covered. Yeah, one is a backup and, and maybe a couple different angles on that. So there'll be some good. We'll we'll figure out one way to get it one way or another how to get it done. If you if you didn't watch if you didn't you weren't around last year, twenty eleven, I just thought maybe I should put a, a, a put together real quick the best of twenty eleven. And uh, I've got 24 hours worth of video out there that, that I never <laughs> that's did. That's the anything. best? Wow. <laughs> that's no, that's just all the raw. I mean, it's all, all right. the raw video through the week. But just to give uh, listeners, you know, we don't we, we record a lot of video during that time. So, yeah. you know, it's in the afternoon. If you can put us on at work, if you can, you know, when you get home, throw it on. I, we've got a lot of material. And then, of course, you can go, go back and watch that a little bit later. So lots of good material going on. And you'll want to tune in for sure. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. It's, it's a good time. We, we have a good time. And um, I, I'm always cutting up. I'm always trying to get into some kind of trouble, either with vendors or with people or, you know, little booths or something. You know, chasing booth babes, you know, doing some crazy in Las Vegas. That, that's what I'm doing. I've been working my tail off for the, probably the last 48 hours trying to get things like started into shape you can't ever mold it into what you want uh, it's always an ever-changing schedule but uh, we have after show parties um, we're going to be hitting all kinds of all kinds of stuff and I recently just got out I have a, like a stack of business cards from last year's show and uh, pe this is people I talk to this is not just I picked up this is just stuff I talked to so there's literally at least a hundred business cards there and um, so we'll be doing that. It's, it's going to be fun, and you're going to hear a lot about CES in the, in the coming weeks. And then um, afterwards, we try to do a CES reporting show, and then we, we kind of cut it off. That's what we did last year. Um, we talked about it for one episode after, and then maybe we mentioned it very briefly in, in, the, in subsequent podcasts. So we, we do try to cut it off because I know I get tired of talking about it. I've got my surface behind me, so if uh, everybody is seeing, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> everybody's seeing my pictures library, and uh, it's it's pretty cool. So, and my uh, you're seeing the tweets kind of pop up here over my shoulder in my people hub, so it keeps on 
keeps on rolling. All right, so contact me uh, in the forums or podcast at homeservershow.com if you are interested in helping out. I could still use some folks on the show floor if you would like to be a videographer or uh, chase me around or even just do uh, a meetup. And that goes for any other bloggers that are that that's headed out there. If you're listening to this show, please drop me a line. I would like to just uh, just meet up with you. I think that would be fun. There, we'll start that. So again, if you're watching via um, YouTube or Google Plus, you can chat with us over at homeservershow.com forward slash live. This is the Home Server Show, episode number two hundred seven. I'm your host, David McCabe. Jim Collison is sitting there in the Average Guy Studios, and we were just catching up about CES. I also put a roll call in the forums for CES. That's probably the easiest way. You just go to the our forums, homeservershow.com, and tell me in the forums there if you're gonna if you're gonna be there, what date you're gonna be there, and stuff. And hopefully, we can do a meetup. Maybe we can. Uh, it'd be fun to get a bunch of guys together and head out to dinner. I know I've been talking with Jose Ortiz and um, this guy right here over my shoulder in the live video, if you're watching, we've been talking about um, uh, going out to eat. So I think Jose's going to, I don't know, he said he's going to treat us somewhere. Isn't well, that right, Mr. Ortiz? I'll have, to, I'll have to make my way out there if you'd like. And yeah, Andrew, I, if you're in the chat there too, I hope that's what you heard. Jose was going to treat us to dinner, right? Oh, man. I miss it. <laughs> he says, "Yep." I put him on the spot, and he says, "Yep." He's he's got a special spot. He's gonna take us to, and I uh, I agreed to show him my secret uh, Thai restaurant that uh, nobody else from CES knows about, only me. And McRibs for all. I think I bought Jim a, a, a McRib one year for for dinner. I said, "This is all I can afford." Well, at ten dollars, ten dollars a burger, you know, yeah. it gets it gets a little steep. Yeah. All right, we should probably get busy on some stuff. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, what do you want to start with? I don't know. Just give me something. Let me um, let me recap real quick. Uh, some of the th I've I've had a busy couple weeks, so let me yeah. recap those real quick because um, I think a lot of it uh, uh, dovetails into what uh, we we want to talk about from a home server perspective. So um, last weekend, I got the opportunity to travel down to Kansas City as part of the MVP program to get us in the stores and uh, to get us speaking in the stores, and so. Um, I had been down at that store three or four weeks before with Lux, and uh, we took a peek in there. Actually, some of the same folks were still there uh, when we got there. But uh, set up two sessions on Windows 8 backup and uh, SkyDrive. And they have in the back of the store, they have a theater back there. Really nice, uh, you know, I, and, you know, really nice big screen uh, TV in the back there. They have a huge 24-inch tablet that they've got Windows 8 running on, so it's a lot like the one I have back here where they've just got that embedded in the, in the podium. And uh, pretty nice setup for a presentation and, and got the opportunity to go down there and do those two sessions. Um, I learned this, that Windows 8 backup is not a very exciting topic for people <laughs> coming in in the store. Uh, it's not if you say it, they will come. Um, most people <laughs> are, you know, most people in there are looking at Xboxes and PCs and some of those other things, and I think if I were to do it again, I would pick a different topic. I really wanted to be true to, to our MVP, uh, you know, what we do, Dave. I was really hoping to, you know, really engage some people in backup, uh, you know, the idea of backup and using SkyDrive, and had some really good conversations with a few folks um, that were down there, made some new friends. Um, I made some friends in the store, and that uh, maybe that is the thing that at the end of the day was was a better, uh, you know, was worth going down there for, was just to meet some of the folks out of the, out of the store. Very good folks, and that mall is hopping down there, and that store was jammed. Uh, you know, there's there's been these rumors. This will maybe be more for your later show coming up, Dave. But there's been some rumors of that. Those guys that went into the Apple store and they said there were 16. Uh, iPad sold in in a certain time per hour, and then right. there's zero. Right, I was seeing surfaces fly out. They would they go to the back and get this big Microsoft bag when you buy a Surface, yeah, or a laptop. They get this That's big Microsoft for me. Yeah, yeah, big, big micro big bag, big plastic fiber, you know, cloth bag. Really yeah, nice. yeah, really nice bag. And uh, they bring it out and they kind of have this launch thing for you. And they they were helping people set their stuff up. And I was watching that in the couple hours I was there. I was watching that happen about every 20 minutes. So 
you know, my experience was three or four an hour as opposed to the zero an hour that the, it, since that was such a scientific survey that was done by those yahoos. But, um, right. yeah. Um, and, and then if you, if you are in an area where uh, you've got a Microsoft store and you haven't stopped in yet, if you go to one of their sessions, they actually hand out these books here. I was showing that a little bit earlier. But this is uh, Windows 8 kind of plain and simple. And, um, and Windows 8 for tablets here is a book that they give away for free. It's a pretty nice, you know, it's, a, it's thick. I mean, look at, uh, you know, it's got big pictures in it and stuff like that for somebody who wants to go through. Definitely made for the older crowd, so to speak, that wants to, you know, go through a book. But they offer those uh, for anybody uh, coming in and attending one of their sessions. They also throw in a 10% discount or um, yeah, friends and family discount. Not good for Surface or Surface accessories, but you can get anything, you can get anything else in the store. Um, for uh, for I think it's for ten percent off. They give you a little card, so little incentive. Swing by your local uh, Microsoft store if you've got one in your area and uh, pop in and uh, see what's going on. They do it. When I was there, they were doing training. They there was a class before me. There was mine. There was a class in between, and then I did a, I did a second one, and, uh, and and worked that. Dave got a great chance to to look at some of the new hardware that's coming out. We had talked uh, two weeks ago, right before Thanksgiving. I was listening to the show again today. And and you were talking about the difference between the 8x and the Lumia 920 and that the the weight different and I man it I hadn't I hadn't done that yet so I went there and compared them and yeah you were right that 8x is super light and that it Lumia is. that yeah, Lumia like piece of paper compared to you know a ream of paper yeah it's that beast is that thing is it solid in the chat. you could hurt somebody with that thing yeah uh, it yeah, is it I is mean, the 900 is hefty I mean don't mm -hmm. get me wrong the 900 is hefty but for some reason, I, I thought that the 920 was uh, was even even more of a, a dog. It was heavy. By the way, I need to I need to offload a 900. Anybody? Uh, oh, there you go. Put it out in the put it out in yeah. the forums. See if anybody wants to pick that up. Um, what are you selling it for? I have no clue. I'd I'd consider buying it, except <laughs> I've got one got too. <laughs> Mine's black. I've got Lexus. Um, so, uh, yeah, so great experience down in the Microsoft store. It was good to teach backup, and, uh, and you know, you still run into people in the store all the time. They have no clue what they're doing to, to back stuff up. So I saw some really cool equipment, including a new Acer Ultrabook, uh, about $1,300, um, a 1920 by 1080 screen that's IPS in a laptop. And you put that thing next to any other laptop in the store, and you can definitely tell the difference in screen quality. Um, going on that that's the first time I've seen IPS in in a laptop you know it's basically yeah. like an ultra sharp and uh, with Windows 8 Pro it is it's fantastic so we in touch screen as well so I it, it's just was cool to go down there I got to see the Ativ the Samsung Ativ and, mm -hmm. and kind of mess around with those so um, not not too much uh, going on from a home server or a Windows Server 2012 essentials going on in the store. I did make a contact with their small business server, uh, Caroline, out of the store, and we're, we're going to start working on some things, small, you know, uh, Windows Server related and see what, uh, where, how I can help them out and then, you know, um, see if anything will come of that. So, good trip uh, down to Kansas City. I met a listener and Paul uh, came down and saw me, another Paul, not Paul, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a tinker guy <laughs> <laughs> but, Yeah. Paul Barron made the journey out there, but Paul listens to us faithfully, and he's out in the Fort Riley area, and uh, and came in. Well, I hope I'm I hope I'm getting that right. I'm terrible with names, and I apologize if I if I messed it up. He'll know who he is, and uh, he came out, and uh, we got a short meetup in before I had to head back um, for Omaha. So a good weekend there in Kansas City um, at the Microsoft uh, store. I mentioned. Um, out in Twitter the other day on Facebook too. I'm building a PFSense router. I, I'm sick and tired of my bad internet connectivity. Uh, <laughs> I just told Andrew Van Til today in Twitter. He's like, "What are the what are the topics for tonight?" I may tune in. So I listed off all these topics, and I said, "Nah, never mind. It's just going to be me and Jim talking about ourselves." <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and here that's we go. It. There we Here's go. What We're, I'm doing. Game on. That's what I'm doing for Christmas. Game on. So uh, <laughs> if you want to if you want to follow me along on a PFSense build, I've run out of ports. On my, in my, uh, in my router or in my switch, so I'm gonna have to get either another switch or get a bigger. Oh, you'll switch. Have, yeah, you'll definitely have to get a new switch. Hey, speaking of, what? I was at Fry's, and which is a dangerous thing, right yeah. there. Oh, but nice. I bought my first 
little managed switch. This is the first ever managed switch that I've had in my home. Now managed in the fact that um, it's managed as best as possible, but it does have uh, quality of service. It has VLAN, uh, network monitoring, so I thought that was pretty cool. The uh, it was kind of it was it was on sale. How much? A mail-in rebate. Uh, I don't remember how much it was. It was. Okay. It's like going to be like forty-three dollars after mail-in rebate. It's a little eight port, so I needed yeah. an eight port, and I thought, oh, that's not that bad. So I picked it up. And uh, but it doesn't have a web browser it, or, or web server built into it. It has an application you have to run. So, but I. I needed an eight port switch. So. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Do I go? Do I go with the D Link twenty four port, which I think is two hundred bucks or something like that, or do I and, and just bite the bullet? I bought a, uh, a Zy Z Y X E L, you know, a cheap Chinese one off Newegg mm -hmm. uh, at one point eight port. They're thirty bucks on Newegg right now, and you I know, thought I'd just grab another cheap, one. Cheap, but that brand, I I really like that brand. Yeah, it's a good they little make router. A good, um, they make a good, uh, good switch. router. Very, very intense router, actually. Okay. Well, with the, the whole reason I get to this, you know, I, I'm going to kind of back into a home server topic here, but the whole reason I, uh, I get there is because I started my migration of all my data and prepping it. Uh, two things I'm doing. One is in preparation for moving it to 2012, you know, uh, uh, Windows Server 2012 Essentials. I wanted to get everything backed up to the cloud. I wanted to have at least, you know, I wanted to really practice 3-2-1 backup like we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I'd gotten a little sloppy with some things. And so if you've been following me at all out at my site, you know that I've been, I've been kind of working through the, the various cloud storage options. Just made an update to that guide as well. Um, added some new services. We're up to about 20 different cloud services that are offered that all have some kind of free or some kind of offering in there. So if you're trying to deal with that, check out that cloud um, know it guide. But um, so, in preparation for this move to 2012 Essentials, I really wanted to get everything backed up right, kind of consolidated down into the folders the way they should be. Um, you know, I started first with music, and I just moved that to Amazon. I'm no longer keeping music here local on the home server for any reason. I know some people want to do that, and that's fine if you want to do that. That's just for mm -hmm. me. Amazon's going to work; it has worked well. But I started by moving all my uh, I started by moving all my documents and scan documents and photos to SkyDrive. So I have that 25 gig on, on SkyDrive. And actually, a uh, pretty good experience in getting that uploaded to SkyDrive. took me uh, about seven, I have about 17 gig worth of all that, and I moved it to SkyDrive in less than 24 hours. Okay. So not a horrific experience getting that moved up. I moved some videos over to Box. I'm at 50 gig over there, although that's not going to be enough. Uh, it and and gig had or uh, box has a two gig limit for each file. So if I can interrupt you, are yeah. you just using the cloud as a means in which to like store it temporarily or as a second spot? I mean, you're going to make like a big backup at home. Yeah. So the the plan is that each each folder has a synced folder somewhere in the cloud so I can get to it. And right now, the goal is to use all the free services. I could easily pay for this. So some people said, well, why don't you just go with CrashPlan? And well, part of it is because I'm writing this cloud, you know, this cloud storage note guide, part of it is I want to use the cloud services that are free that are out there. So, and I want to be on SkyDrive and I wanted to try Box out. And I've, I've been trying, you know, I've been trying these other services that are available out there as well. So, um, yeah, the, 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 the point of this is to kind of folder by folder make a decision about where's the right place to keep that data if I'm going to sync it somewhere in the cloud and want to have access to it. So we know Sky, uh, SkyDrive's got some nice functionality around, you know, around photos, especially with Windows 8. And it, it picks up your photos folders and brings that stuff in and, and shows those pictures there. Um, it, it's, it's a nice place to keep all your Windows documents, so any Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, all those files, um, those, yeah, I mean, you're, you're showing that right there. And um, so I like the SkyDrive for things like like documents, like, uh, you know, um, like Word Docs, like Excel. And, and oh, by the way, if you're on, if you're, you know, you're away from the house and you have to jump on somebody else's computer and you need to edit a Word Doc or an Excel Doc, 
they don't have to have Windows installed on that PC to make it work because Windows and, and or, I mean, sorry, they don't have to have Word. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote are all available for free now on SkyDrive. So uh, most of you know that, but I'll, I'll just mention it. I talked a lot about this last weekend. Um, so see, uh, right now I'm thinking, oh, there's, oh, nice. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> That's uh, that's my welcome to Dave's <laughs> Dave's house picture. If you're just getting the audio on this, you really need to head over to YouTube and uh, and check out the video that we put together every week. You just that's such a precious uh, precious picture. Um, so that's uh, Dave. I moved all my documents and uh, pictures over. Or I'm syncing them with SkyDrive. That's not the ultimate end solution uh, because I also sync them. Um, I use the uh, the 2011 backup to back the whole the whole structure up to my IO safe, right? So I've got everything backed up from fireproof, waterproof storage um, to that, and then ultimately I'll run Crash Plan against the whole thing and have a single storage backup somewhere like Crash Plan or Pogo Plug or something like that that has unlimited. So when I'm done, I'll have four. It'll be in four places, and some people say that's too much, but we're home server guys. You can never have too much backup in you know in that and. Um, the, the goal is to get it all backed up, and then I'm going to take down my windows, you know, have them in the cloud and backed up somewhere else and on the OSF, and then I'll take down my 11, 2011 box and rebuild that with 2012 Essentials. Yeah, well, 4.4 four is definitely overkill. I mean, I, I would well, be sure. comfortable with 3. I, I would do yeah, yeah. my server with 3. Right. And I, I only do the fourth one because I want I want the experience so I can write or talk yeah. about, right? I mean, right. it's purely, ex, I'm just doing it for the experience value. Right. Yeah. See, I'm. I, I I would do. I would do two, two in cloud. You know, have it have it somewhere twice. In in your house, and then then do it. Yeah. Well, and I'm just I'm messing with all these services, and and I've I've really liked the Pogo plug uh, as of late because it creates this cloud this private cloud for you, and you can also create, you can also move their stuff to the public cloud, and and get it backed up and have it local. A lot of the folks that have band uh, bandwidth issues. Um, that does not go out if you're using private cloud only. It doesn't go out to the web, uh, and so you can keep that all in house and add any attached storage you have to it. We're by the way, we're giving one of those away out on my site. So if you go to theaverageguy.tv and click giveaways, you got about a week. We're giving away a Pogo Plug Classic. Get signed up for that, and um, and you you might be able to win one of those. So yeah, that's the that's the prep I've been doing. The, the plan is to get all that done through Christmas, and uh, I'm being intentionally slow about it. And, and in the process, yeah. I've had these internet connection problems, and so I thought I'd build the PF sensor. All right. So it's all it's all joined together. Well, I, I'm right there with you. I um actually I'm not running my PF sensor router right now, and I it's sitting over in the floor, and I just need to do that. I need to get it out. But what I was going to do is I'm changing my my local subnet, and uh, I wasn't uh, proactive enough in my thinking to uh, create a different subnet in my house in Wisconsin. So I can't very easily VPN to it because it, it, it gets confused. So I'm like 0 .1, 0 0.1, 192.168.0.1 in Wisconsin, and then I set the same thing up here. So I, it, it makes it hard for me to VPN and and get uh, and you know work on the router there, work on a Synology, work on uh, cameras and whatnot. So what I'm going to do is put in my PF Sense and then uh, see if I can get it to update because I'm running an old uh, beta build. Oh, that was nice. Sorry. <laughs> Did something else fall off your mic, Jeff? Uh, no, something something fell. Anyways, keep going. Yeah, we heard it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's okay. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, and if that fails, then I'll probably just uh, uh, redo it. Uh, uh, but I've been having trouble, and uh, I was going to burn a DVD with a new PF Sense build, and I can't find any blank DVDs in my house. Uh, I don't know; they're in a box somewhere. So I <laughs> thought I had unpacked, but I guess not. It, it, when's the last time you really used a blank DVD? Probably the I last know. time I loaded PF Sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, I'm loading PF Sense on a on a you know the the new uh, 2.0 or whatever it is has has a uh, flash drive version that you can yeah. use. So I just put it on a flash drive, and I'm, I'm actually yeah, no, I, one right yeah, off I'm gonna have to do that. And I was gonna do look at Untangle again. Um, for some reason, the last time I ran Untangle, I woke up to my network dead, 
And so I just yanked out the Untangle hard drive and put in the PFSense hard drive right back in it. So that's enough. I don't need any more. Um, and I'm there with you on the Switch. You got to have a Switch. And uh, I bought, I invested in a 24 port and uh, it's the best thing I ever did. And that allows you to push down your eight ports and your 16 ports into different locations and expand. It seems like every TV that I own, like the one behind me, um, I have at least an eight port switch at that TV and it gets full uh, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm in the same boat out in the living room. There's a full eight port switch out there. And then I filled one up here and I've got my four ports filled up on the route. I, I don't have a port right now. Uh, we were talking pre-show. Mike was like, "What's slowing you down on PF Sense?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't have any open network ports, and I don't know what to take off the the network at this point." You know, yeah. Um, you know, part of the problem is I've got so many attached network devices at this point between the yeah, Tenido plug and the Pogo plug and the Drobo and the um, home. You know, you just they start adding up. No, I agree. I, I completely agree. And I'm starting my 2012 Essentials uh, migration as well. Um, I started working uh, with a little bit on uh, SkyDrive. And I'm arranging what I did. And I don't, have, I don't have it printed out. But I did. I made a PDF of my storage. And I told you in a couple of podcasts ago, that's what I have to do is take all uh, a picture of all my hard drives and maybe I could even, ah, I'm not going to waste your time and show it. But um, I take all my hard drives in use in all their sizes. And then I take all the hard drives that I have empty. And then I take all this peripheral storage that I have somewhere else. Like, you know, the U the backup USB drives, my the little NAS drives. I think I, I think I showed you this a couple of weeks ago. I've got uh, a review unit here uh, from a listener. It's an iOmega. This thing is full. I think it's got two, three terabytes in it. So it's got six in here. And uh, I was thinking just just for, you know, temporary movement, I'll do J-B-O-D and, and make this one disc. And I've got, boom, I've got six, ter you know, six terabytes right here. So that can be something as well. I've got storage all over this place. Yeah, you know, Dave, so do I. So did I, right? I mean, I've I three or four weeks ago, I came to the conclusion I just had gotten real sloppy and I had stuff all over the place. One of the things that was really helpful, and and I'll recommend it. We we've been we talk about this about every year. It seems like maybe around this time every year, go through and document where your stuff is at because that for me that was real helpful to say okay. On the home server, I've got these folders, and in these folders is this type of data, and it takes this much space. You know, build yourself a little spreadsheet. And, uh, you know, over on the IC doc, I've got this stuff, and it's taken up this, space, this much space. You know, we've always, I've always said, as long as I've been on the show, I'm not a big data guy, so to speak. While I, I run home server and I have a lot of storage, I don't really have a lot of data. I don't back up movies and that kind of stuff. Well, I figured out this weekend, I have 300 gig. That's it. When I started documenting it, documenting it, just what? yeah, that's it. One if I if one copy, that's just if I had one copy of everything, I would have like two hundred and fifty-eight gig or something. Okay. like Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Everybody, if you're on video, let's see if you can. Can you see this, Jim? Yeah, I can. You bet. Okay. <clears throat> so this is this is my page that I'm I am sharing. So my OS drives in my server right now. Uh, two 250 and they're in a hardware raid server backup inside the server is a two terabyte which is pretty much full right now I have these virtual box discs which I consider those extra now so I'm gonna pull those out and format those and then I've got a version one with one point terabyte free and here's my list of spare drives on the right so I've got a two terabyte Seagate a three terabyte Seagate USB, a Synology with three terabytes, which is full, by the way. The iOmega with six terabytes, and I have an iOSafe at 500 gig. Now, in use is in the middle. Um, you can see RAID 5, that uh, my RAID 5, uh, and all the folders in there. I've got DVDs. That's 1.3 terabytes of DVDs. Recorded Those are movies? TV. Those are RIPs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recorded TV, uh, HD video camera, that's just family video. 
and uh, converted videos. That's uh, where I take DVDs and convert them into uh, mobile formats. Music and system. I don't know what system is, but there you have it. And then I have a two terabyte mirror uh, with data on it with 500 gig free. I Gosh, that's got to change. 646 gigs of software. And a lot of that is uh, is backups of the site where I've backed up databases and the home mm -hmm. server show site and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Client computer backups. I have 156 gig of pictures, 110 gig of videos, more music, user folders, and more system. So, and now I'll take off screen share. Well, I don't keep movies, so that I mean that's a big deal. I don't keep the. I mean, I do rips, but I don't. I don't really care about them. They're all movies yeah. I already own for the most but part. That's how. That's how I started my planning. I had to get yeah. it. I either have to write it down, or I have to do like a Visio chart, you know, before my brain will comprehend, you know, what the project is going to entail. Do you keep ISOs, Dave? So whenever we download ISOs from Microsoft, I do, and I do purge those. Yeah. I, I keep them, and you know what I'm doing lately is I'm just keeping them on USB stick, because you can, if you watch the sales, you can get an eight gig stick for six ninety nine, five ninety nine, and I just keep Windows eight. You on just one. label it twenty twelve e on one, yeah. Label the stick. So I should get a little labeler so I know, because I, I like to do that too. But saves you some time. Yeah, saves you half hour from I having to do my sticks. Right? Download it, yeah. Yeah, that that way you don't have to download and upload it and all that other you know. Yeah, I should those. do my uh, my fancy labeling on a past podcast. But see, yeah, the, see the piece of tape right there <laughs> says Win Eight. <laughs> I expected a really nice white label on yeah. there. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, and then you can see E. <laughs> That's twenty twelve essentials E. Little eight gig sticks, really nice. So six bucks. Dave, um, Crash Plan giving you a little love this week on Twitter. Uh, you know what? Yeah, they 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 did a good thing actually. Um, one of our listeners uh, from the meetup won a Crash Plan Pro account. Pro accounts are pretty heavy duty, and they don't have a lot of home features in them. And he got home and he tried it, and he's like, he emailed me, he said, Dave, I don't, this is not for me. I can't use it. Um, I need I need a home account. So he gave me the license back. He says, no big deal. He said, just just give it away. Just give it to someone else. No big deal. He says, I'll just do something else. He was real nice about it, actually. And um, so I just, I just emailed Crash Plan. I was like, hey, can we get this guy a home account? You know, and I'll just give you this license. And they said, well, we can't convert it. He said, they said, but here's a brand new license, a home account uh, for one year, unlimited backups. Go for it. And uh, so I, I tweeted out to him. I was like, you know, yeah, yeah, not only are they a good company, but I mean, they're, they're good people. So, and then I gave him that and he's like, whoa, that's so cool. So he was really happy. So Crash Plan got a happy customer and it, you just know he's going to be, you know, resubscribing to it a, a year from now. So, and they just had that sale where they were 42% off, I believe. They started at 0%. They were giving her a free accounts. Yeah. Every yeah, I got in on it 3 bucks going up. Yeah. yeah. I when by the time I got there it was $3 and you mm. know, I, I even <laughs> I considered buying and I you know what? I've got a I've got a code for a year right now sitting in a sitting waiting for me to activate. I, I'm as soon as I build 2012, Crash Plan's going to go back on it and then I will use Crash Plan as the you know the backup for that. Um, and it will back up a single copy of everything to its to its cloud. So then, do I really need to buy another, you know, another one? But a lot of folks took advantage of that during the the Black Friday sale for sure. If you missed it, bummer. Um, we even posted that over at JPEG to Raw's um, Facebook page and had a bunch of photographers jumping in on it. So oh, I bet, yeah, they, that they, is. I I hope it's good for them uh, a year from now. But God, that has to kill them. You know, people got that was just everywhere and i know we were we were tweeting it and posting it like mad so. yeah well that's what they want right they want that they wanted to create some new customers and uh, and they certainly did that and yeah. a very a nice way of doing it and and I, i'm kind of anxious to get back on crash plan um you know to to use that again so it, it'll be good do you know are they out of ces are they is that are they going to be there oh, they, um i asked them 
if uh, there was someone there I could talk to. You know, they, if they were just going to send uh, somebody there and they said no. Okay. I didn't expect them to have a booth, but yeah. sometimes they send people, you know, just to walk around and, and have meetings and, you know, yeah. establish relationships. Yeah. Or sometimes so, they partner up with somebody. And I know yeah. our friends at Synology have just recently partnered up, partnered up with somebody at CES. Um, yeah, that's going to be one of our, um, I hope, is one of our features in the live video coverage is we're going to be stopping by the CES, uh, the Synology booth, and hopefully looking at a, NA, a new NAS. And um, I, I don't know if they've announced anything, so oh, I don't want to give anything away. Uh, okay. Maybe, was that too early? Did, or did I just bust I an know. NDA? I know. You didn't say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Good. I was like, oh, crap. I, I, we, we talked about that, but sometimes I forget it. You know, maybe yeah. I, was, I heard something I you wasn't know, supposed some, to hear. They tell me things over email, and I, you know, yeah. sometimes I have to send this back and say, is this, uh, is this NDA? Is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when can I talk about this? I have yeah. to be careful. One of the things that came up, let's talk a little bit about the forums. Maybe we could, you know, we'd, sure. we'd done that segment before and, and I know mm -hmm. you got some things in the notes, so, uh, so be ready for that. But one of the things that was cool this week, uh, I think either this week or last, and I think it was Kyle, I think Kyle Wilcox, I think who, the, who that is, posted that he, and this was a great reminder that, that he, with, especially with crash plans, some of the software won't see network attached storage as a location if you're using a Windows home server. And so he used the VHD functionality, you know, create a VHD on the, on the, on his Windows home server, uh, uh, because you can use a network attached device like a Synology or a Drobo. You can, you, you can use those if, uh, as VHD and then attach that to the home server and it sees it as a letter drive at that point. And then the software can take advantage and use that, um, you know, use that uh, target to back up um, or do whatever you want at that point and, and get that done. So if you're new to the home server realm and you haven't messed around with that very much, a lot of the guys that have been around a while probably know that. But it was a great, I forgot, oh, yeah, that's right. I've got this Drobo FS. It is, it, 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 I couldn't, I don't have a you know, target set for that. And so I set up a one terabyte target. And, have you uh, played around with that much, Jim? Uh, no, I haven't. VHD? I did set up the VHD. There's, you know, two modes for that. There's dynamic and and fixed. Uh, basically, the fixed one took probably took me 15 hours to create that first. You know, it yeah. creates the whole space. It, so just I some think more. it warns you too. Yeah. Or it it does when you play with uh, with it under VMs. It warns you, hey, this may take a while. Yeah, and uh, it, it's it, it that is the recommended way they want you to set up a VHD uh, in, in, to get that done. And, you know, it's basically a virtual space, virtual storage space that it, that for Windows treats it like a regular, you know, an M or N or P or whatever you want to name it. Drive. Mm -hmm. um, the dynamic sets up almost instantly. So if you're going to use the dynamic, which means it's just going to grab a space and then it's going to allocate more space as you go. Um, that sets it up very instantly. So if you wanted to mess around with the VHD and you didn't want to wait for the entire thing to format, somebody, let's see, where was I at? I think it must have been in the forum. Somebody had said, because I made mention that it took a long time to get it done. Somebody had said, yeah, use the dynamic, but there's some other things you don't get with that when you use dynamic. Um, oh, and somebody had mentioned they like to, uh, you know, this this would work really well with the Drobo because it'll warn you if you if you're dynamic and that thing is growing and you need more space, it's going to tell you. It's going to start flashing some lights and say, "Hey, I need more space. You need to add drives." So I'm I'm probably going to go dynamic on it right now. I've got that one terabyte of fixed, and I'm going to pull that thing down and and delete it and go dynamic and let that unless somebody can convince me otherwise. Okay, so <clears throat> just in case anybody's confused, back it up. The whole conversation started because he was trying to crash plan basically to himself, right? Yes, use the okay, crash okay. plan as it, right. Okay, so keep going. Local. Yeah, no, right on. So he set up the VHD, pointed crash plan towards it, and this is a particular problem if you own a, a, a NAS, like a, like a Drobo FS, where it, it, it doesn't, you know, it, um, Windows doesn't see it as a, and some software doesn't see it as a place to, uh, to be able to, um, you know, it won't go to a network, uh, a network drive and back up. So a very, uh, just a reminder of a solution that's out there. Not, it's kind of average guy stuff. Uh, you know, you can go out there, you don't need to know a lot or it's not very technical. You just go into the computer management um, section and kind of right click, go to the drives, right click and say create VHD. And you get those two options. Jam Wills is saying dynamic is better. 
um, and and so um, you could. Uh, I guess that's going to be the recommendation. I'm going to go back and do it dynamic. Okay. And w have you had any uh, indications on speed when you're using this? I mean, no, I, know I have it's, not. I mean, it's across the network, so yeah. I mean, and the FS speed. is ridiculously slow, right? That's yeah. the slowest Drobo that they've that they've FS, got. Yeah. So, um, I'm not anticipating a slow. I mean, again, it's backup, so I, for the most part, I don't really care. Um, well, I, I, you know, it, so you have to take it. You have to take it with. You got to take speed into account. I, I'm sure it is not very fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had another instance. Um, guys talking in the forums about libraries, where a guy was complaining. He has a, a Synology NAS, and he uses uh, Windows libraries. You know, when you go into Explorer and you've got video, recorded mm -hmm, TV, and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and you just click it, and boom, it's there. Windows kind of does everything for you. Well, it likes for that stuff to be local or at least on another machine that is Windows because of searching. And it will not allow you to do that with uh, like a Synology NAS. And that's uh, one of the things that he was complaining about and having a hard time figuring out. Uh, I'll put that... Uh, that post in the show notes. Anything we talk about will be in the show notes. And that we found a tool that's called a Win7 library tool, and he said it didn't work out very well. I do need to follow up on this post to see see how that turned out, but it really didn't didn't work out very well. Um, there's just no way for Windows to do the the things that it needs to do in enable or in order to enable libraries on a separate box that's you know not a windows machine in this case it's going to be synology which is a uh, uh, derivative of linux so anybody out there using uh li windows libraries with uh with an external nas box maybe head over to the forums head over to the copy of this uh excuse me, tongue-tied, the show notes for this episode, I'll put that link out there for that and uh, you can figure out what's going on. Dave, one of the, the, the other topics that just continues to amaze me is how much traffic uh, we get out there for that is, of course, anything around the N40L microserver. And uh, the, the, we've got to be, at the Home Server Show, we've got to be one of the best sources for information around that box, and we probably have the most knowledgeable guys. I mean, if you think of John Stutzman alone, um, we probably have some of the most knowledgeable guys on, on these, these these little microserver. Um, there is a uh, there's a BIOS mod post out there. You know, Christian put that together for us and then released it out into the wild. And a lot of those guys have taken advantage to to, to increase the functionality on the on the microservers. And and by the way, that I think the N54s have been announced. And I, I didn't read all the way through that, but that that's some news that broke on the forums and uh, and some upped specs. And everybody feels like those N40Ls are probably go on sale again as they start as they st or, or maybe they'll just continue them in the channel. They've been very. <laughs> They've probably been very successful yeah, uh, little know. servers for HP. Uh, we don't know yet, but there's a post out there that has 82,000 some views um, and just continues to get tons of traffic. So if you're if you're considering, you know, it's Christmas time, and if you're considering putting together a microserver, or you're you're wondering about what to do what to do about a home server um, at this point, um, the microserver and a copy of 2011 is a great start and. You can get there's there was even some drives discussions this week around green and red and black and blue. It sounds like a football game rather than a yeah bunch of hard drives uh, or or gang violence. But um, and some great information out there. Some guys talking about reliability and and um, power consumption. And so don't miss don't miss out on those links either. Yeah, we seem to have. Um we have a corner on the market on s specific things. You know, there's, there's, a, you know, you've got that Drobo thing. You've got the N40L guys. You've got uh, Synology guys. Uh, we've got the BIOS mods guys. You know, we've, we've got a lot of good folks that have a lot of knowledge out there in the forum. So it's a great place to be. I'm trying to get a link into the. 
yeah, in yeah, the chat, it, and it's just not working. It, it's it's uh, it's uh, struggling. Yeah, you had the, put you had put a post out there, Dave, uh, while you're trying to get that done. You had, um, you know, one of the nice one of the things that we seem to do every year and uh, is put out. Um, you know, what are you buying for Christmas, or what? Yeah. Uh, where are you spending your money? And uh, and so look for that. I know you put out a new egg spending um, a post just recently. Um, oh no, I, I guess you didn't start that. I guess yeah, somebody uh, else started it. I, I'm the type of guy I put that out there. Yeah, and, complaining uh, about his uh, 2012 <laughs> new. He went. He was it. looking through his history uh, of yeah. purchases, and uh, we can thank the BYOB guys. Um, for that as well, but if you haven't joined us out there for that kind of discussion, or you want to just kind of talk about something you bought and uh, and throw some things out there, do that. and certainly drop some pictures in there. You know, we don't we don't get enough pictures in the forums of of some of the stuff that you're doing. And uh, and by all means, if you're having a problem, I'll say it one more time: just search first. Lots of information out there that uh, you might find your question before you post. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes searching is not the best way. I fully admit that. Uh, it's just due to the forums, not due due to us. But um, just look at the topic uh, where where you're wanting to dig around in. Like the 2011 topic has tons of stuff. You know, drive extender replacements and raid, and then you got the BYOB forum. They've got tons of builds, and there's just tons of information in there. And some guys were telling me the easiest way that they search is they use a Google site search. So they go to google.com, throw in homeservershow.com, and then use their search that way with their keywords, and it'll go out and search the whole site, which is pretty lame that they have to do that, but the, the forum software just doesn't, it doesn't have good search capabilities. Speaking of, there's an update that I'll hopefully put out there soon. And um, I, what I also need to do is I, I've been promising that I'm going to skin the forums and make it look a little prettier. And do I have any? No, nah, there's no feedback. It's hard. Um, the the donating members. If you donate via P PayPal, you get added to a donating member uh, group, and it turns your uh, text green. And when you you'll show up, your name will show up green, and it'll say donating member. So you get to become one of those. Uh, in that club, and you also get some private gallery or some private forums to um, to chat around in, and it's all the uh, donating members. And uh, I'll ask questions. If if I'm going to make a change to the site, I go out there and I ask uh, the donating members first because it's just like like ownership almost. You know, if I'm going to change a color of something, I say, "Hey, what do you think?" So, um, where was I headed with that? I have no clue. Oh, uh, forums updates. So I'm, I've got a forum update to do. The problem is CES. So all my spare free time gets consumed by trying to get ready to go to CES and getting all the interviews done and, and all that kind of, kind of business. So I, it's even, I have to slow down on my 2012 build. I've got my 2012 build sitting there. I've got my PF sense upgrade kind of sitting there and, it's all gone to heck in a handbasket. <laughs> it's a busy time of the year, and, it is. Um, and a good time of the year to download the show and listen to it uh, as you travel. You know, what we need to do is get uh, like a gift idea for our significant others, maybe to keep us out of hot water. Maybe we need to throw that in the uh, in the marketplace. You know, what are you buying your wife <sighs> besides bowling balls, fishing poles? Hard drives and servers, you know, <laughs> that doesn't count. Yeah, I don't have any problem with the bowling balls and the fishing poles, but uh, hard drives. I did buy, you know, I did buy my wife. Just, just I'll tell myself. One year, I bought my wife <laughs> a phone, and not like a cell phone, but like the back. This would have been in the '80s, before you know, the late '80s. I guess early '90s, uh, it, when you know there were all kinds of really cool, you know, that you would plug into the wall. That kind of phone with answering machines and stuff. And I bought her. I bought her one of those things for Christmas. It's not really what she wanted. It's really what I. It's really what I wanted, and uh, that was that was maybe the dumbest thing I've ever done. I've yeah. done a lot of dumb. I've done a lot of dumb things. Maybe not the dumbest, but it was pretty dumb. So, yeah. guys, don't be dumb. Yeah, We're going all went all cooking gifts. <laughs> I didn't mean it to be that way, but it was like a pan, a utensil, a baking yeah. thing, some icing things. 
She's like, are you trying to tell me something? Yeah. Oh, crap. A new raid card, <laughs> says <laughs> says Tim. Yeah. A new raid card. Yeah. yeah. And just think. Um, think about it before you buy it. If it's going to hurt when they throw it back at you, I wouldn't buy it. And a raid card is definitely going to hurt. I think I'm going to get shiny things that you can wear around your neck. Yeah, see, I'm the, the world's worst. When it comes I, to me too. I just suck at that. And so here's the deal. I've got a 14-year-old daughter who has finally figured out what my wife wants. So there she's going go. shopping with me. So I'm I'm kind of saved at that point. And, yeah, uh, well, a three-year-old and a five-year-old are not going no, to be in there. No, no, and you've guard. got boys. You've got boys. They're clueless. They'd get They'll Hot Wheels. <laughs> Mom wants Hot Wheels. <laughs> They're as clueless as you are. Um, and I am uh, yeah. both. Hey, there's Dave, a free ebook out there, Jim. There's an update. Yeah. Um, the Windows Server 2012 uh, ebook. Uh, there was a, a free like PDF version of this thing, and it's been updated. And I just wanted to throw that out there. I'll see if I can throw that in the in the chat if it'll let me. Otherwise, everything will be in the show notes, and it's just been updated to RTM version. So you can go out and get it. Yeah, it's cutting off links, guys. I don't know why it's doing that. So just copy and paste it. There's also an update from the SBS team, uh, well, the Windows Server team now at at um, Microsoft, talking about storage spaces for Windows 20, uh, Windows Server 2012 Essentials. Dave, as you go to 2012, are you considering storage spaces at all in your build? You at know, this point? I think I yes, considering. So actually, I am considering. I think where I would use it is maybe uh, like off. On the side, you know, uh, maybe that's where I would keep uh, my ISOs or something. And something I could mess with and play with and while it grows and, and it builds. You know, because I, I just hear one thing after another. And, the, you know, the latest thing that I heard is uh, some difficulties uh, about using storage spaces and your PC backups being on them or actually can't be on them because it, there's something jicky going on. So, I don't know. Jim, you... Anybody no. in the chat room? What do you think? Uh, I'm not me, only because I don't need to. A uh, two terabyte drive is good enough for me, right? I mean, this is the beauty of kind of keeping a, being a minimalist in your data, so to speak. Is that uh, me in a two terabyte drive, and I'm in good shape. I mean, I I just I don't really need to span that much distance. So, will I try it? I probably will, just to because I can talk, so I can talk about it. So I might, I might set it up somewhere else or do something else along those lines. You know, I messed with it quite a bit inside the VM world when we were, when mm -hmm. it first came out and, and I feel pretty comfortable with it. I feel pretty comfortable with the concept. It's drop dead simple from a setup standpoint. I mean, the average, the average PC guy can do it real, real well and very, very quickly. Um, it's not hard to understand. You got you got some options. I mean, at first you got to kind of work through it. It's just not it's it's not necessarily key. You know, a turnkey. You got you got to know a few things what you're doing. But for the most part, it's pretty easy easy to use. So, I think it's it's something we should mess around with just so we can give some feedback to the Microsoft community. I would not put a single piece of production data that's not backed up somewhere else on it. So you know, be warned. Uh, don't don't install don't make storage spaces your only place and then something goes wrong and you get all get all bent uh, be, oh storage spaces sucks because it lost my data well you could have lost your data a variety of different ways you need to get that stuff backed up as well which is why I'm moving stuff to the cloud yeah I, I think we still consider that um, you know we would consider a mirror drive or a raid uh, you don't consider it a backup you know it's just some type of redundancy yeah. redundancy in your storage it's not two plan. copies it's not a backup so. it's not two copies it is one not exactly. two one two is one is anyways so um yeah I, I i will probably mess around with it some just to just kind of to to kind of get a feel for what it does i i like the idea of the different yeah. sizes it gets yeah, back to de too. yeah so um, yeah, so they have a new article out, uh, blogs.technet.com. If you go out there and search for storage spaces, uh, there's an article posted as of November 27th from that team, uh, get, kind of giving you an update of what they're thinking with storage spaces. I hope they're working on it. I mean, I hope they're making it better. I hope it wasn't a one and done and we're just going to, you know, it's released and now we're going to, I mean, one of the things, Dave, I'm, I'm really hoping, I'm going to try and finagle my way out to the MVP conference this year. Mm -hmm. and out in Seattle. And and uh, I really want to spend some time with the server team asking them questions about the storage spaces. 
see where they're going. Is there a future for it? Are, are you guys because if they've they got version one and then it's gone into maintenance mode, you know, mm -hmm. why even mess with it at that point? Yeah. But if they're if they're serious about it, if they think that this is going to be the future, then I, I, I think we can we'll have something to talk about. Um, and I think it could be a very cool technology going forward, especially in the in the you know the home. I, the need for home servers is not going away. I mean, people are going to need you, people want and need storage, local storage that's not their PC or their laptop. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I, I think it'll grow. I give them some time. I, I definitely think I don't think it's going to be abandoned. So it will grow. Yeah. Some good stuff. All right. Well, anything else in the notes here you want to go over? Yeah. Lassie's got something out here I was looking at uh, that they just announced. It's called Cloudbox. Have you have you kept up on these guys? Well, only from the the other side of the, you know, only from the voila side right. of things. I, I don't know what it is. It's a hard drive. Yeah. It's, so it. It, it's it's a lot like you know they're they're trying to this is this merger like between the cloud plug kind of thing right yeah right yeah. you you get that in and you set it up and sure. you it's local it's private local private cloud so to speak right it's your storage at home but you can then it syncs up with a site that you go to um, you probably go to lacy.com or something like that and sign in and then you have access to your files through the cloud really nice looking drives. Uh, and and 120 bucks for a one terabyte. So you know, uh, that's yeah, two terabytes, not, 150, and a three terabyte. It's external is a buck eighty, 180. Yeah. So a little more expensive. You're paying for the, you're probably paying for the service. <laughs> you know, in with that, but it's stuff at home, and you, you can get access to it through the cloud if you want. Tons of services coming out that are doing that, Dave. Um, yeah, and it's what it's I crazy. Don't see is this. Does this? I wonder if this has apps. I didn't see. It says cloud access. Let's see my NAS remote access via mobile, tablet, or PC, Mac. Voila! Share with friends sync files. Yeah, so I'm so sure they're using Voila as the back end. Yeah. yeah, you probably go out to Voila to access the 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 data on it now. Ten gig Voila secure online storage. One yep. gig included. Yeah, and they they decreased mine from 140 gig down to 70, uh, and it it's got a date of March th March something 2013. So I'm wondering what'll happen on March, you know, in March of next year. Are they going to take me all the way back down to the free plan, you know, that they have? Voila is not a great paid plan. They're very expensive for for the amount of data that you can get. There there are other places that. Are doing. I mean, sixty bucks seems to be the threshold right now for unlimited. So if it's more than sixty, there's, but you know, Carbonite and Crash Plan and Pogo Plug and and Back Blade, Back Backblaze, back Backblaze, back Blade, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, uh, they're all offering it for sixty bucks unlimited right now. So that seems yeah. to be the standard. All right. So if you're watching out there on YouTube or on Google Plus, plus this is the Home Server Show. It's episode number two hundred seven. I'm your host, Dave. You see Jim Collison there talking to you about Walla and let's see. If you'd like to chat with us, ask questions, comment on some of our uh, chat back and forth, you can head out to homeservershow.com forward slash live. I, I start reading something in my brain just fries. It's hard to keep up with the chat room. The chat room's really starting to roll. Uh, Mr. Diehard showed up in the chat room and a lot of guys that uh, uh, recognize a lot of names in the chat room. A couple of... Uh, uh, a couple of names I, I don't recognize, and uh, that's a good thing. I'm glad we got some some new guys in there. So, oh, wow. Doubled in the time again, last you can time chat with at. us. You don't have to sign in. Just uh, homeservershow.com forward slash live. Log in or just put your name in and chat. That's it. Um, oh, I've got links to uh, Windows Server 2012. Uh, eval is available out there. It's a 180 day free trial. And also you can try Windows Server 2012 on Windows Azure with uh, no test hardware required. I've got a link for that. I'll put that in the show notes. I've also got a link on, um, I'm not going to discuss it. I'm going to let you watch it. It's a, a demo of Active Directory and it, it's just kind of a uh, a little teaching on Active Directory and 
all about that. I'll put that link in the show notes. Some news. There was uh, L Disk. We haven't talked about L Disk in a while. Yeah, long we time. haven't, have we? Um, do I have a link? I don't think I have a link. But L Disk has a new version, 3.0.0.6 for 2011, and storage server in 2008 R2 and Essentials or SBS, pretty much everything. Um, what those guys are doing is they're allowing you, they're giving you a, an add-in or a plug-in for your console and helping you do iSCSI uh, targets with your storage, your external storage, your storage area network, and your NAS that uh, uh, is compatible with uh, iSCSI and being able to work with that. So. Looks like DriveBender continues to push out updates. Always. Yeah. Keep yeah, doing they, it. Man, they are just, they are like, they've got a purpose um, out there. I see this article about uh, the 54L. Did they have a date on that when that would be two new versions spot on the web? The, it's in the, the form somewhere. Yeah, two versions of the N54L microserver, one that has a 250 gig hard drive. And four gig of RAM. The second ships with two, with only two gig of RAM on board. Those are Athlon AMD Athlon Neo processors running at two point two gigahertz. Um, so a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a bump in speed. From so has those anybody drives. in the forums done a uh, like a comparison? Like here's the N40L, here's the new one, and why you would buy the old one? Why you buy the new one? Somebody's got to be writing this, right? If not us, I bet you another blog will pick it up. Uh, listed, yeah. Um, no U.S. pricing on this one, but oh, no but, pricing. Uh, one comes with uh, no U.S. pricing. I, this, um, let me let me dig in a little bit here, real quick. But the one version comes with four gig and no drives, which I think is all the the one we're going to probably want to purchase because everyone's going to want to put their own drive in there. Although four, yeah, we all know four is not enough. If you're going to buy four, you're going to be upgrading that thing. So. Go ahead and, and uh, well, Christian, we're going to need you to hack this pretty quick as soon as it comes out and, uh, and get that BIOS updated. So, you know, folks, there's been a lot of talk about upgrading that to 16 gig of RAM out there. And it's not just necessarily plug and play to go to 16 gig, uh, but it's not terribly difficult either for folks that are upgrading those. Um, and then the 2 gig, 2 gig, who in the world would buy a server with 2 gig of RAM on it, Dave, at this point in time? 2 gig and a 250 gig, come on. Come on, HP. You can do better than that. Uh, let's see. Uh, chat, you guys have any pricing, any U.S. pricing out there? I don't. Uh, I, what's CAD? Is that Canadian dollar? So $491 CAD. But I don't know what CAD is. Who said it? That's your clue. Uh, well, it's uh, the, the post I'm seeing here is over at... Um, Oh, MSWHS. Okay. Do I gotta jump in on this? <laughs> you don't have to. Okay. Yeah, four forty four Canadian. Yeah. Who knows what it's gonna cost? Yeah, yeah. I, they'll. I'm sure they'll come out um, a little bit more than the current my, the the current N forty Ls, and then uh, prices will probably start to to, so to drop on those. This is. It's got. A 250 gig drive in it and two gigs of RAM. And yeah, that's the, the lowest the other version. Is a four gig no RAM drives. diskless? Diskless. Put that's how they're breaking there. this up. That's right now. Those are the two that they're seeing. Oh, that's pathetic. Yeah, that's that's not a great configuration. They should just yeah, they should just leave it alone, make it four gig, and just release it. Oh, you, you should know? be able to buy it in four, eight, and sixteen configurations. You know, custom configure it, and then. Um, you know, go from there. I don't. I don't know why it wouldn't cut. Why it wouldn't support 16 gig of RAM? I know it's a micro server, but they're so freaking powerful. They do so many things. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's still AMD. Yeah. Still gonna hopefully be you know a little a, a low powered um, box, even though this is quite a. I mean, this is quite a big uh, jump from the last one, right? Yeah, double. Well, double the pretty much double the 36L, the N36L, which is the first version that some folks had um, before. That was like a 1.2 uh, gigahertz processor. These are 2.2 dual core. Okay. I'm out of stuff, Dave. What else you got? Out? 
What else you got? I think I'm almost done. Cloudberry. Yeah. I know. I think we've talked about this before, but they've got their add-in for uh, actually it works for V1 for 2011, and they've got one for um, uh, Essentials. But they're they've got some uh, some blog posts about how to archive your Amazon S3 data to Glacier Amazon Glacier storage using the Cloudberry backup tool. And uh, I use it. I, I really enjoy that uh, that plugin. It was right in my console, and it's what does my backups all over the house to different targets all, all night long. So uh, it just checks. I I set it up for like different shares, like music share, video shares, and all that stuff that we were talking about earlier. And they go to different places throughout the network. Um, actually, it checks for changes. If there are changes, man, it makes that copy of that backup. So. Cloudberry is a great, great uh, uh, addition to your Windows Home server. And it doesn't cost that much. It doesn't cost that much at all. So that link will be in the show notes. And I ran across a whole bunch of, wow, a whole bunch of uh, YouTubes. Let me check this link to make sure it's good. And Microsoft Windows Server 2012 Essentials Edition Anywhere Access. Uh, oh, is that, it's the by HP, the Coffee Coffee Coach series. So I will put um, some some good information on um, 2012 Essentials, and um, we're talking about let's see Anywhere Access, Data Protection, Email Integration. Key features, all kinds of coaching on 2012 Essentials via video in YouTube, and I will put that out there. Yeah, they're spending some money on it for sure. There's a little bit of training. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. This is there's I mean, some stuff coming out it's around. Not it. like Media Center in version one. They're, right. They're actually supporting it. Yeah. So, um, I think Jim, we were talking about uh, the new Microsoft Social. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I think got a lot of laughs today, Jim. Oh my God! It, you the know, whole Webosphere was laughing at it, social. It came off beta. It's been in beta for a while. Public, uh, you had to get invited to it. And I'd been invited to it about six months ago uh, during its its I beta. I did too, and I never used it. Never, never oh. used it. So yesterday, I I saw a note somewhere on the web, and I'm like, oh yeah, social. That's right. So I popped over there. <laughs> it's it's interesting to say the least. Not well. Yeah. Here, so here's something interesting though. So I dropped the pogo plug uh, contest on it just to see, you know. Then I would monitor the hits that I'm going to get on the site, and it, it, I picked up three or four hits off of it. So there's people out there looking at it. I mean, there's mm -hmm. it's and it's getting, I mean, it's getting a handful of posts. I think it's everybody, uh, everybody trying it out to see what it means, yeah. and then I think they're going to. That's exactly it. what I did. Is I yeah. went out there and put a post and just tried it out. I think they're quickly going to leave. And right now it's just it's so slow I can't even I can't even scroll yeah. in the thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not very good. So close. It uh, I I think this will probably be the last time we talk about so dot cl. <laughs> <laughs> there won't be there will not be a a social MVP community. <laughs> I can't even keep up with our Facebook community. Yeah. Which, by the way, I posted out there today because I felt guilty. I, I saw that. I saw that. Nicely done. I felt way to join us on. It. Way to join the rest of us on Facebook, Dave. <laughs> I need someone else to be my Facebook champion. Someone else to be in charge of that because I. Yeah, just... you need to get you need to get a Facebook admin, right? I mean, we got some admins admins in the. Let's just call that out. I'm sure there are some Facebook lovers out there who would who yeah. wouldn't mind jumping in on the home server show. And I'll take it. I need it, all the help. Yeah, I the it, the for, maybe the forums aren't your thing. We've got some form admins already, and those guys do a great job. Uh, but uh, maybe we need some folks who will jump in on the Facebook group and mm -hmm. and get that going. All right. I don't know how long we went, but um, well, hour twenty. Hour twenty. Okay. That's not too bad. No. If you're not on Facebook, or on Facebook, or if you're not on Twitter, consider getting out there to Twitter. And if 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 anything, just follow Jim and I, so you can um, <clears throat> stay up to date on our CES antics, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go from there. So, Dave, are you doing a 
uh, Surface Geek show tonight? I am. If I my voice comes back, yeah, it's tough doing it all a two I got, two in I a row. Got time, I got thirty minutes until Surface Geeks go. So nine p.m. Central, ten Eastern. SurfaceGeeks.net. Yep, ten Eastern. So yeah, head out there to uh, everybody. Head out to your Twitter and help me retweet it. We'll get some. We'll have some fun out there. Shmuley and I have a lot of links to get through. Shmuley's the uh, my new helper out there on Surface Geeks. So. So thanks for downloading that. I appreciate it, everybody. All right. <clears throat> I'm David McCabe. This has been episode number 207 for Jim Collison. We're going to see you here next week. Goodbye. Good night. Stop. Or I'll say stop again. Okay. Dave looks like the weather reporter with the screen to the background. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, John. Hey, guys, if you're tuning in from YouTube or Google+, Plus, we're also going to be continuing this conversation with the Surface behind me. 22 viewers out there. Everybody head out to surfacegeeks.net. That will be where the next show takes off. That'll start at 10 o'clock. Same chat room. If you're at homeservershow.com, uh, it'll be the same chat room, so you can just head over to Surface Geeks and, and get the new video and start chatting there. I don't think we're going to do a long show. I've been up to 1 a.m. for two nights in a row, and I'm dying. Yeah, I need to get myself into bed at yeah. least an hour or two. I've gone two or three in a row. The other night I was troubleshooting. I was going to turn one of my old wireless routers just into a quick switch. Mm -hmm. so that I could get some more ports right. as I'm building this PS Sense. And it, it turned out it was a little bit harder than that uh, to get it done. And I started at 11, and I was monkeying around with some stuff and moving some stuff around. Pretty soon I look at the clock, and it's 12.30. I'm like, oh, you got to be freaking kidding me. It's and, so uh, to do. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, i got to get in bed. Because I've been, you know, I've been doing 12, 12.30, 1, and then getting up at 6.00 doing it all over you. And that's just not yeah. good. That is not good for your body. Yeah. Well, I tell you, things are looking good for our CES trip. I've got, I got a response from Samsung today. So we have an appointment to go look at all their tablets and their ultra books. And last time, uh, Samsung, I kind of just showed up and they were freaked out that I was going to do live video. So, I mean, they really freaked out. But we got, they let me do the note. Remember when we, we looked at the note, Jim? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's all they would let me do. They yeah. Me. So, I have an appointment this time. So, we got other stuff we're going to do. We'll have fun. And I, I leave it open on purpose. So, that gives me a chance to, you know, find some things in between my appointments. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. I'll have to, I probably won't have time, but that's, I'd love to put a best of, you know, pull out, you know, 20 minutes of material from last year to promo um, the show for this year. So maybe I'll go through some of that video and, and yeah. uh, put and a little I, promo I together. Notes to, um, well, I've got so many in my to-do list. Of, you know, first of all, I've got to create logos and, uh, get uh, featured posts set up. I'm going to change the blog back into the featured post where it has sliders on the top. And uh, I, I'm going to Gigabyte. I've contacted them, Joe Miner. So companies like that are very, very unless you're new egg or Amazon, they're very hard to get into their doors. So, you know, if you're in chat and you're listening live right now, let me just say that during the, you know, there's a lot of time that uh, from from a studio perspective, Dave's moving around, and I need people to talk to. So, um, last year I opened it up. I created a list of guys that uh, I knew would be willing to just kind of jump in and have some conversation to keep the kind of keep the channel rolling, so to speak. And uh, and so, if you're interested in doing that, if you're currently in chat, I don't think we're live at this point, right, Dave? You <laughs> shut off. Is specifically, Will's group underscore al following Dave on the surface. Can you see yeah. him there? Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, Jennifer, Ohio. Guys are tweeting me just to get onto the screen. Yeah, I told them. I said, who would be the first one to get on there? 
early. I typed That's that in funny. chat earlier. Yeah. I'm going to do that on Surface Geeks. But, uh, yeah, you know, you could, uh, Dave, you could set that up in a way and, and uh, kind of lead off the show with that, you know, where you've got the, you've got Twitter going on in the background. People can yeah. kind of tweet in and see their tweets. Um, do you, uh, so anyways, um, yeah, John, John Zadler just said, Jim, now's a good time you, for you to invest in a Raspberry Pi. The, uh, we all know how I feel about that. The, so if anyways, if you want to join us that week, uh, during the, during the down times, in there just keep that in mind and uh and and ping me and i will bring you into chat we'll put you on the in-between show It'd be good to <laughs> chat with somebody uh oh, it, it just rings everywhere i see it in my computer my phone buzzes and the yeah. surface goes ding thanks guys this is, is it, how it's going it, to be for the whole podcast now is it ripping there's Tim. no longer dollar signs and pop tarts they're just gonna <laughs> they're just gonna tweet i uh i see tim back there <laughs> yeah, Tim Black is right here. Sup, Dave? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's nice. I need to get. There's another. Oh, I think I took it off. It's a good use of that screen, by the way. Hmm. LastPass had an update today for for uh, Windows Eight. Yeah, I've got. Um, I got seven updates in my store, and I'm just going to do that in the next show. Yeah. Okay, well, that one. Look at me. Let's show up here. It, it does. Look right there, man. It's just, it's fast. Look Bam. at me. John Stuckman. Hey, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. I think, you're, I think we're on to something there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is awesome. Yeah. We're so going to be uh, tearing that up on the next podcast. Hey guys, I'm gonna hit in broadcast. My voice is dying. I'm gonna go freshen up some coffee. You guys in the chat, man, that's why we keep doing it. That's why we keep doing it. You guys make it fun. So, thank you very much. Head over to the forums and uh, and uh, goof around out there. Yes, it's my it's a Surface RT. So, no six layer. It's a three dollar three dollar HDMI cable. <laughs> Turn around, Cable Devil says right there. All right, that's cool. Bill cool. must have to. Bill must have tomorrow off if he's hanging out this late. <laughs> I guess we're early. I guess we're still early this week because we started so early at seven. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys can see my setup at all. Can you see this spot? Can you hear me? Just barely. But yeah. Where's my finger? Oh, I gotta get my mic back. Pull your finger, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> this box right here. Yeah. So that's my new little echo. I like it. I like my little So you don't even need to leave that room. You could just turn around, watch TV. There's a little bathroom right off the Exactly. It's a Sammy <laughs> LED of fifty five, yeah. There's my new remote. Excuse me. Yeah, there's a bathroom, there's a bed, there's a shower. Are you monitoring uh, Surface Geeks or Home Server Show on that Twitter feed? Both. Or both? Both. both. They're showing okay. both. Okay. I'm seeing those starting to come into my feed too. <laughs> John Stutzman. Check out Gigabyte at CES. Uh, yeah. Great. So I'm going to get some profanity or something. I'm not going to figure this out. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this done a lot at conferences now. You know, where they've got it live on the screens. They'll have a live twi Twitter feed going on. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, that's fun. That is fun. There's a uh, there's a Metro app that I could. Hang on. Search Twitter. <laughs> J.M. Wills just said hello Omaha to me on Twitter <laughs> let's see if I can make the I want to make the which one did I have we're total nerds oh you took it down <laughs> what oh I was I just tweeted in there
Rowy. I'll install that. Okay, guys. I really, really need to get something to drink. Yeah, you need to switch over. Hit, I'm going to hit in broadcast and I'll be back up here. All right, guys. Thanks Good for night, coming. Guys. Chat's been fun, guys. See you over yep. at Surface Geeks.